the Beyond the Ropes podcast is proud to support the Kyan Prince Foundation. Go to www.thekpf.com to donate or support the foundation on their mission of bringing people together to end violence. Founder, Dr. Mark Prince's best-selling book, The Prince of Peace, is available on Amazon and other major retailers. My defense is impregnable, and I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat your children. Hi, welcome to Beyond the Ropes. It's me, Michael Prime. Joined today, David White, Sean Mansfield. Dwight sent a sick note today. He's uh, he's not about. Genuine. Genuine Honest. sick note or just missus has got an extra long f- thumb? Uh, a riot. <laughs> David did the under the thumb motion there just because that, that seemed really weird. Oh. Dwight's not here because his wife's got a long thumb. <laughs> Large, 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 large fan. Sorry, I'm paraphrasing. Here. The pressed on his, get out. pressed on his forehead, holding completely him down. wrapped around the way. He can't move anywhere. Yeah. He's being constricted by this enlarged thumb. You can giggle away all you want. I'll release the tapes. I must use laughing, Dave. <laughs> cool. All right, so yeah, we are we're testing a new mixing console today, so. Hopefully it comes out all right. We've actually yeah. had to listen to our intros yeah. and everything, which you lot never do because you, you we record and then you leave and then I'm left. Yeah, true. Mm. Cleaning myself up like some whore. <laughs> it's weird. Um, but again, boxing. So boxing this week has been Not it's, nothing's changed since last <laughs> week. Still no B sample. Yeah. Still no B sample. Still in limbo. But um, we asked for questions. We got lots of questions in. So we'll go through them. Mm-hmm. But as we're testing out our new, our new styles today. This is not a test. I repeat, this is not a test. The following is a broadcast announcement. Authorised by Team BTR. Boxing can be dirty and corrupt. We are here to cleanse it. This is the purge. I'm not going to lie, I like that. I mm. think that's ledge. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. David, it is your turn this week. Cool. We are back to the beginning of yep. the uh, alphabetical order. Please banish some bullshit from our sport cool right this is this is literally one I've had to remember quite quickly because I've totally forgot I was doing it today yep. but um, ring announcers that don't do a full night's work and when I say that I mean you got these guys who I can't, don't ask me the names of them because I'll never remember them but they do the first five fights and they'll ring they'll announce everyone and give you the decisions at the end of the night or at the end of the fight and then you've got the uh, the buffers of your world who just pop up at the end for the one fight and everyone remembers them for <coughs> one little catchphrase which to be honest is so outdated and boring that you could literally have anyone say what they want to say or what they do um, it, it just winds me up that the, the, the fellow who does all the work can't just carry on. I was gonna say, just to clarify, which one are you hating? Yeah, it sounds like are you hating everyone. the guy that turns up and does the early work? No, like, I like him. Right, oh, I right. like that fellow because he's, you know, he's putting a shift in. Um, what about if it's what, uh, what David Diamante? He's the same, yeah, but he. Do you know what I've noticed? Is he does all the the early the stuff I mean. as well? So I'm happy with that. But if Buffett done the whole fucking fight card, no problem. But he don't. He just turns up. He gets paid probably triple what the other guys are doing. Triple, yeah. Or could, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. And it's like, I don't know, back in the day it was like, oh yeah, I can't wait for him to say that. 
now it's just like he's been over it too long isn't he like, this guy doesn't been... know what he's saying sometimes yeah. So like, what, what, let's just get to the point. Are you hating? You're throwing Michael Buffer in right now. Aren't this you? is basically all about Buffer. Yeah, kind of probably. Yeah, <laughs> it is. That's, yeah. that's it. Buffer. I just have had enough so, of Buffer. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's it. I'm changing it. Not from. Yeah. Just get rid of Buffer. And Do you know, know what? I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, me too. Oh, Send right. him back to America, and we don't need him over here anymore. What? Right. Fucking so. hell, Brexit. I know. Brexit. <laughs> sure, Jesus. Yeah, I think so. I think. I think. No, I, I, I do agree. I just why he's he's so non-important to boxing. Like he does bring nothing to the get table. I told you, I was done with him when you started seeing his Twitter, and he was like. Oh my good friend, old Scotty boy, and you're like, yeah, so quick, quick. Come, come yeah, on. yeah. You're yeah. Like, what are you, like, you you don't do this. You're yeah. not running your own Twitter, and if, yeah. if you do run your own Twitter and you're now referencing Scotty boy, yeah, then you you have been here too long. Mm. <laughs> if you're friends with Scott Quigg, I think you've he's been his friends of Sam Eggington. <laughs> I think that's where what we're at. What a head! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> guy's got a great head. That but, sentence yeah, could be edited yeah. brilliantly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm complete. I think 2013. When did he come over it? 2000 started coming over here regularly. 2013, 14. When when Matchroom started, Joshua White fight wasn't that his first one? Was it? Did he not do? Did he have not done Frotch Groves? I can't remember who it was before him. I don't know. Maybe it was just his first agent because I remember him because I was interested. In he, he, he said that Stormzy was his favorite entrance he'd ever That's seen. That's right. Yeah. And I was like, he's into grind. Yeah. I think he, he remember him saying yeah. That. yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Literally, just shut up. Yeah. Well, so you obviously Done. didn't see um, Anthony Yard coming out of Lethal B at the Copper Box. So, there you go. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. More for you, Buffer. Oh, dear. That, that was terrible. And I don't think he really, like, more often than not now, it sounds like his throat, he's got a sore throat. Well, it's not even that. Like, he, if, <laughs> you'd expect him to know shit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, why do you need to read everything off a card? You've, you've got to learn two people. That's all you've got to look like. You're, if he's only here for one night, for one night and one fight, know this guy's record, know this guy's record, know his nickname, know his nickname, that's that's the know where he's Everyone's from, the same know where he's from. Fighting pride of. No, yeah. Fighting pride of. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The whole of Just, the UK. You, you've got... That's Anthony Josh as well. Let's say 12 weeks to figure this shit out. You've got to remember three, four it's things. Just, Buffer should go into a camp, is what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Read your fucking home. Do your homework. Yeah. But instead, he comes out and he's still there looking at his card. Yeah. Full on A4 bit of paper. Like proper. No, and then like he, the he, reads, he reads it out wrong. It and you're does like, actually, um, fuck off. But he gets the weights wrong at weigh ins as well now. It, it yeah. does kind of spoil it a bit. Yeah. When he says like KGs instead of pounds and stuff, yeah. and you're like, oh, mate, you've, you've, you've got that one a bit wrong. <laughs> this guy's a fucking giant. No, yeah. actually, he's really skinny. <laughs> Weighing 250 <laughs> kilos. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> fuck whoa. me. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Oh, yeah, buffer, done with you, purged. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm happy with that. But who would you? I don't mind. I don't think it really matters. But no. what since when? Since when does the fucking guy introducing people become bigger than the fighter or the mm. fight that you want to go and see? Like, I don't, like last years ago, it was quite like you knew it was a big event because he would come out. Do you know what I mean? It would, be, it would be a bit more thing like, but because it's, he's doing every Tom Dick and Harry that, show, it? exactly. The Let's get ready to rumble now has been devalued massively. But he's at he's out he's at an MT he's at a match room night. Then next week you see him on this fight night, and then you see him over here. I know he's signed with Matchroom now, but it was killing me where I was watching him every half decent fight night. He'd be the main guy speaking at the end of it, and you're like. Just think, I've seen too much of you now. Yeah. Whereas it wasn't, it's not special. Like the odd, like three or four fights a year, maybe that's pretty cool because you know it's a big fight night. But when you're seeing him eight or nine times a year, if not more, especially in some really shit shows, you know, I'm thinking, nah, I'm done. But do you think you, it's to cater it. for the people who um, might not have ever watched a boxing match before? It's like a bucket listing, isn't it, to see Buffer? Because mm. <sighs> I'll be honest, when we went to Joshua White, I was buzzing to see mm. that mm. but again we're we're many years down the line now and now but maybe that's because I have seen it now I'm just thinking mm. oh fuck off it's just tired I think for me it's just I'm just tired of it like I don't I don't think it really 
he doesn't make it any more special now. I think because of the amount of times I've seen him and the amount of times like that, like there's no excitement when he's when he talks. Like it used to be like, can't wait. To, with it. Let's get ready to rumble. Now he just goes. <laughs> it's like oh, I love that. That okay. impression is exactly the same as your Katie Taylor impression. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> and I'm not doing it. Damn it! It was worth a try. <laughs> I used to rate him when you know he used to have a like a Mexican versus an American fight, mm. and he would do it bilingual, like he would do it in English, oh, yeah, he'd do yeah, it in yeah, Spanish. Yeah. He'd be like, "Now that's some shit." I, mm. I respect. I respect. That. That. And then when you look at his card, it literally is probably like phonetically written. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alejandro. <laughs> like, yeah, well done. Oh, yeah. yeah, but now Sam Eggington, <laughs> bro, just just leave it. Drop me out. I'm, I've had enough. Yeah, bring yeah. Diamante in. Diamante in. I don't mind it. I don't mind him. <laughs> mind him. Mind, mind, mind him, mind. But he uses the word auspices a lot. Under but, the auspices of this, so they've all got their own thing. They're all irritating. Yeah. Like he re- reads the name twice, just in case you didn't hear it the first time. Yeah, but I remember he did an interview on IFL. And he tried to explain that. And you know, when someone tries to explain why they do something, and you go, "I'm more confused now." Yeah, mm. that, that doesn't make any. He was like, "This is a throwback to the old guys." I was like, "What?" Mm. But no one did that before, did they? Like, mm. I've never come across They're anyone like really old guys. Yeah, like. The, Maybe old, old, old. I reckon he was watching some like really old rubbish ones. They were in a massive hall, and it was just literally just an echo. echo. <laughs> it just said the name, and it just echoed. He's like, oh, "I like that. I'm gonna do that. Oh, bring that back." <laughs> yeah. I just don't understand his purpose. Yeah. Like, take away the dreads, and I think he's he, he's not even. He's not even. That's, like his, he, that's his thing. Like, he, he repeats the name, and he just looks like he shouldn't be doing that job. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not really. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not really. I'm not fussed about him. Because I think he is more... Because he's not so big. Like we know him over here and we see him quite a lot, but he's not the he's not the, the buffer, is he? Like, I reckon just put him in the purge as well. Stick him in? Yeah. Stick right, him in, cool. Yeah. Let's just keep... Yeah, all these big name announcers gone. Just leave it to the little guys. Where's the guy who won the, that competition to become one? He works on the underground, do you see it? No. No, I don't think it actually is. That's one of them, you know, the competitions. Oh, you know, it's, it just yeah, it happens. Yeah, yeah, underground scene? I said, yeah. It's one of them. Yeah, he's on the underground boxing scene. He's an unlicensed commentator, ring announcer. Dangerous game. <laughs> Bare knuckle ring announcer. <laughs> Whoa. Just shouts really loud. They're not allowed yeah. mics. He's just got to come wow. out. Uh, Stands on the chair. That's one of them really weird things where you have a massive competition and there's just no end to it, right? Mm. No finish. But someone did win it though, no? I don't think they did. But in that kind of vein, let's move on from the purge and move on to the uh, World Box and Super Series. Boom things. That was, I thought that was a smooth segue. We're, we're going to get a shit final in that with no with no people in it. Yeah. Mm. Where are they going to have that final? Oh, do you know what? It I, it doesn't matter. No because one's it. <laughs> Progress has said that he's not fighting. Josh Taylor is kind of half skipping, half not skipping, doesn't know how to have a yeah. Clue what do to I do have right a training now. plan? Do I not have a training plan? It's, it's bizarre because you've got one guy saying, I am not fighting. Uh, and then the company saying, you've got a contract, you have to fight. It's very similar mm. to <clears throat> Marie's Joshua, so which we'll obviously move on to. Yeah, yeah, so we'll, we'll, really good. Good. we'll get to that at the end. I um, need another button. Boxing's Ping getting pong. weird now. Like it's become um, Obviously, contracts have always been massively important, but now it just seems like I love the fact you don't even need boxers in the in, in the press conference. In the press conference, oh now. mate, look, we've got our, in, we could do a whole section on that piece brilliant. of shit yesterday. Mm. Um, <laughs> but World Books and Super Series. So yeah, we've got one fighter saying he's not turning up for the final. One guy saying, "Well, I'm supposed to be there fighting, so what's the deal?" Yeah, we've I'm got a, questions come in about this. Cool. So um, I suppose it's a, a good place to start. This one came in from uh, Dan Frost. Uh, it's a great writer hopefully we'll be getting him with us again soon um, and this is uh, at Danny Boy Frost so his question was uh, Pro Games versus Taylor World Box and Super Series final is looking in doubt what's everyone's thoughts on another option should it not come off do they pull the plug altogether or get a replacement opponent in which in turn devalues the final well they've done it they've done it for Eubank Jr Groves didn't they what? No, they. No, they, sorry, they were yeah, gonna. They, they, yeah, were, they, they were gonna. It, they held it on for held on for it for ages. Didn't yeah, 
So I don't think I don't think putting a new another fighter in there is going to change too much. Um, I think they'll long it out just until he either until gets the, what he wants until the legal battle's finished. Yeah, I'm guessing it's over money. Well, from what I've read, basically, yeah, it is. Like people aren't being paid. Right, so which is like the, the foundation of the sport. Like you go to work, you do your job, hundred percent. Yeah, you get paid. If you're not being paid, you say, "Oh well, I'm not coming to work." True. But haven't like the organisers said that people are getting paid? Yeah, <laughs> but it's, 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 it's one of the ones where like, we're sitting so far on the outside, you're never going to know what's actually happening yeah, behind yeah. closed doors. But if a fighter saying, "I'm not fighting because I'm not getting paid," and you, you, it's difficult to doubt these guys. Mm. Yeah, true. And it's one of the ones like. It's very hard for you to, to be paid and then say, come out and say, no, nah, I ain't been paid. Yeah. Because they'll just, they'll, 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 they'll literally, work, they'll literally they? will just be like, oh, there's the proof yeah. that we sent it across. Proof of funds. Yeah. Let's not go back there again. Yeah. Shit but like it that. would be the case. That that would yeah. be all it was. Here's the. Well, there's the proof that we paid. Here's a redacted payment slip or whatever. Just be, there you go. You've been paid. Just stop. Yeah, just get training. Let me send that to the tax but, man. But then if it is as simple as that, then you think, unless they're going to scrap the whole tournament, all they've got to do is pay them. Uh, no, this, it out. we said from the very beginning this tournament my opinion was it was rushed it didn't need to be done yet no. three weights was a waste of time and it's been we've had some exciting fights in a way it's been absolutely Legendary. fantastic all yeah. the way through but it just seems to me season two of this has been f- it's terrible it's, it's been a disaster mm. from the beginning mm-hmm. yeah but and what you should be looking at is you should be looking like first series we had a we, the tournament was brilliant mm. but we had a few issues in it yeah. this one seems to have been all issues with a, f- a few good moments so a couple yeah, of good yeah, fights yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and if that's what we've got if that's the curve we're working on now then yeah, series 3 you do not want to see it so um, I pers- I don't think you'd bring in a replacement but I think they, I, I wouldn't because I just think like, that massively devalues everything. Mm. If you just what's drop someone They're into just the basically final, what's the point? Yeah, if you just drop someone into the final, unless you drop someone in who is a world champion already, yeah, and it becomes some sort of unification bout, that's the only way you're going to get away with it. But that's not going to happen. No one's going to take a, a world title fight and put theirs on the line at that short notice. Yeah, especially if they're not able to pay one fella. They who they still have to pay anyway so then that would be double yeah. outgoings yeah. Can't. But the problem is uh, um, for me is that even if they pay him and it all goes well and it's amazing these finals these finals I don't really think will capture the public's imagination anyway because I don't no. really think <laughs> like over here we're, like we're all fans of Josh Taylor and we know how good he is and everything but you go walking down the street and be like have you heard of Pro? I think he, to an extent nope. I think even the same can be said for Josh Taylor as boxing mm. fans we know mm. it mm. but I, and in British in boxing Brit- fans. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say. So we know him, but in, in Scotland, obviously, he would be a hero to, big, to, to big many fan favourite, yeah. But I think even if you stepped out into like surrounding countries in Europe, I don't think he would be a big draw. I don't think a lot yeah. of people would necessarily know him. Yeah. Think about how many world champions there are in the world now, and we're like, oh, yeah, I've never heard of him. No, oh, yeah. Even as boxing yeah. people, you know, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. never heard of him. I, yeah. think, I think they missed the boat, though, because if you look at um, a lot of the divisions, what seems to be happening is certain promoters TV networks are gathering together boxers who are all in the same division mm. and basically doing their own version of it yeah like if you look at what Matchroom are doing now with well, say super poten- weights, potentially what they can do yeah. look at that PBC of, of welterweights PBC have been doing it the whole time to be yeah. fair but they're but sort it's... of like really fragmented now like you're going to yeah. get certain weights dominated by a certain promoter yeah, yeah, it yeah. doesn't really leave much space for a uh, Super Series to be any good the problem with Super Series is if everyone else continues to do what they're doing now like you said PBC etc they can do it at their own their own pace yeah and it's not some like and World Boxing no Super force. Series are so pressured now yeah. to complete a tournament because it's a big thing like we've started yeah. this we need to finish it whereas everyone else can just be like <laughs> we'll just put ours on when we're ready we, this is our next three our guys can wait six months yeah. to fight they can wait eight months and, to and fight <clears> Super <throat> Series will just be left with the kind of the scraps really of what, what who, who else is available Unlo- exactly understand so, fighters yeah, I mean the second I mean, part, even the first tournament. I mean, George Groves did it because it was a big cash out at the end of his career, and yeah. it was with Sowlands. Yeah, Eddie Hearn put in Callum Smith because I don't really thought, think he really cared too much about. He wanted to keep him busy. Yeah, keep him I busy, and he just, knew he'd come out of it. If you're in this, I haven't got to arrange you any fights. And the cruiserweights, I think that's just that, that's just peaked. That, that, 
It, Super Series will never be as good as that ever it again. It was the perfect, no. the perfect amount of people, yeah. wasn't it, really? Yeah. The second part of his question was, um, uh, what would our preferred weight run be? Sorry, weight run should uh, season three happen. So what, what what weight would you choose? In a dream scenario. Dream scenario. Well weights and heavyweights. Well weights and heavyweights. Picking two or three, sorry? Two or three. Right, yeah, just pick one, pick two, whatever you want. I don't think they would do three weights again. <laughs> I don't think no, many yeah, people I think, know they do three weights this time. Well weights and heavyweights. I'd just go heavyweights. And I would like like you said, because it's even if it's just the scraps now. I feel like it would be an, there would be an, there would be enough quality in the eight that they would get in there to make it interesting. Oh yeah, I mean, oh, you well, could, you for could, me, yeah, you could have that in a year, like, even without the belts. Bang, there's, cause there's, I think that heavyweights. I was assuming they would, yeah, yeah. they would get the best people though. Yeah, I mean that's, oh, the, yeah, that's the dream scenario. I'm just trying to obviously. There's enough good heavyweights outside the box, but there, there would be outside eight the outside five, of that yeah. that you could make a really, oh, yeah. really great tournament with. Like I said, belts kind of a side of it because listen. Like you've just said, they're, they're tied up to networks now. Mm. You think Deontay Wilder's very much tied in with his one, if we're talking heavyweights. Mm. Andy Ruiz, if he decides to commit his future one way or the other to somebody, then that's it, the belts are tied up as well. Tied that's up the for thing, a, isn't it? P- PBC and Matram basically wouldn't let the Wilder Joshua fight happen just between two people. They're hardly going to let it happen via a third party. Exactly. So, mm. But yeah, heavyweights would be my one. Like I said, even yeah. if it wasn't the any world titles in there. I think you could get like you could even you could fill it up European le- European standard. Mm. Do you know what I mean there, there are so many very decent fighters that you know would have a good free well free fights in a year. Yep. So yeah, I'm all, I'm all over the heavyweights one. So just to close out that question, um, would you get a replacement or would you fuck it off altogether now? Would me personally? Would I get? A, would you, I, w- I would fuck it off. Yeah, oh, it's, those, it's, those two options. Yeah, yeah. Just say Josh Taylor's a winner. Josh Taylor's a winner. Get your money off the box. That's it. Go and pursue your world title now. I, yeah, I think my alternative would be to say, yeah, you have won your your weight division, whatever, but I will put you on a, a fight on the, whatever one of the other weight cards are. Well, I guess the worst because you have to like, you have to earn your money. I suppose in that last fight, if, if, if you're scheduled to fight, if Josh Taylor's the winner, can he just fight him outside the tournament straight afterwards anyway? Uh, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't see Who why. Knows? Unless it was uh, if you drop out, you can't go and earn more money fighting the same fella. There's got to be some sort of clause. There, there's loads of things like that. I remember <laughs> they, they tied Eubank Junior in, hadn't they? After the, mm. the after he lost to Groves, that he was because he was like first reserve for the final or something he wouldn't have been allowed to fight anyone right, that wasn't on their books or whatever they wanted to do yeah and I think the Sourlands are very shrewd guys like they make they do that like well out of business they know mm. what they're doing mm. they're not yeah. going to let anybody just drop out and then get a better make, deal make more money while their, st- their stuff's still going mm. on yeah yeah fair enough um Similar question from uh, at Gloves Red. Go and check them out on on Twitter as well. They do a podcast. They cover so much of the, the Scottish boxing scene. They are brilliant. Um, and it's what's the future for World Boxing Super Series? We we kind of touched on it a bit there. Now, do you think we're going to get a third season? The only way they get a third season is, is if they literally done what we just said, stuck a heavyweight one in, and just just one 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 weight, three nights of the year. It's self defeating, I think, though, you because I mean? you get these divisions, and then you're gonna get you just get loads of unifications, and you're creating these stars that are gonna get tied up by a promoter who won't then. Well, not, not, not necessarily. Yeah. Not, if, not necessarily if you got uh, well, yeah. If you if you got no belts involved, and you've and got to say the that, best people aren't involved, isn't it? Not necessarily, because you could have the guys that are on that those the verges. Like fuck me, Dillian White's been faffing about for two years. Um, and all of it, like the American side, you've got up and coming boxes, European and English side. It's not going to happen, though, is it? That's the problem. Yeah, not, not for the belts. <clears throat> not for those belts. Not for the, the top three or four. But, but okay, so say Dylan White, why would he go in there and potentially lose his ranking? Because he'd earn money. He'd be active. And if, if you know, at the end of the day, <clears throat> once you do, if you do win this, like you look at Callum Smith. Yeah. He he won it, boosted his profile. Everyone raves about him being the number one super middleweight mm. um, you do that for a heavyweight let's say I don't know someone like 
Um, let's say if Jerome Miller was in uh, was in it, he wins this tournament, yeah. then he has literally got st- his stature back yeah. within a year of being active again. Because I uh, I don't know how his whole situation is, but he's back soon, isn't he? Mm. What is it? Three, four fights before he gets a, even a sniff at another world title. Mm. If he was to win that tournament, straight away people are going to be like, well, you know, he's beaten the best out of the, the rest, surely. And you're hoping within that year, one or two of the, t- the top four have fought each other. Yeah. So then it's time for someone else to break into that top five, and there you go. I, I think, for me, the only interest I'd have is <coughs> heavyweights. And I don't really care if the top four, five fighters ain't in it because there's, <coughs> there, like we said a minute ago, there's so many decent fighters in in the heavyweight division that it would okay, so still be say interesting. Say you were Joe Joe Joyce's management, or let's um, <clears throat> call that's called. Del- but you've just seen how long this one takes. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Is if they bulleted it down to three nights, so you got one in March. A, a summer one and then let's say the, the finals are in November, December mm. and it's guaranteed these are the three dates the winner of this night fights the winner of that fight on that night finals here then for a year you know you've got three decent fights if you're winning but do you, do you think the concept works when um, the winner of it hasn't even got a genuine claim to say I'm the best in the division I think do you know what I've, I'd like to hope that it gave a kick up the arse to the other networks and the other organisations to say okay we've taken let's say we've taken eight of the other top heavyweights right go and fill your pay-per-views with the, the ten below this see who's interested in what you got mm. to show for the next year considering these eight lads are involved in this yeah. I, I just want to I, <clears throat> I don't I think they'd be pissed off the fact that these guys are going to be active in decent fights earning decent money and they're going to have to be like well we're still number one well no one's interested because you're fighting the 15th to 25th ranked fighters because they're all that's left for the next year do you know mm, what I mean I yeah, think it would be, it'd be yeah. a lovely little shake up just to <clears throat> just to say look if you lot ain't going to put fights together well we can sign these guys we'll fight one, two, three. I think it'd be interesting I think I'd love bit, to see it. Yeah, I think it's a step down, like because I think apart from the cruiserweights this year, everyone who's going to end have won four of the five competitions can genuinely say at the end of it, I think I'm the best in the division. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't really think there's many divisions left. But there how many, that how many, it. how many years have we been saying that about the top three, top four heavyweights already? And they're, they're still, they're, they're they're still, still going to say I'm the number one. And yeah, they're still going to say, say yeah, and they're well. still yeah. People are going to still say that, but unless they fight, which they're not, mm. then it, all of a sudden it's going to start being like, yeah, right, mate, whatever. Yeah. Who cares? You, you, you're inactive. You're fighting bums. The, the real fights are being dodged here. No, one, like people will lose interest. Mm. Whereas if you've got an actual tournament where there's some really good fighters in, uh, I'm sure people will start their heads will start swaying. Mm. I would like this now. I said it I kind of when I was talking about um, Ultimate Boxer. I just think they come around too, too often. I would love to see this almost like a an alternative to the Olympics sort of thing. You know, like mm. Olympics every four years. <clears throat> do it in four-year cycles. Do loads of weights at the same time, but do it mm. in four-year cycles. And then drop them in the two years between the Olympics. Mm-hmm and then you can build it up as much as you want you can try and get the very very best people like we had for the cruiserweights where everybody who the belts were all there it was because people wanted to say I'm the best Yeah. but I think now because they're so frequent as well you if you had a belt you'd be like do you know what I'm going to uh, I'll take a miss I'll miss this one because chance side there'll be another one in the next two years mm-hmm. if I have my belt cool if I don't I'll be able to go in there and be guaranteed X amount of money mm-hmm. to go back in it, it doesn't seem exclusive enough at the minute I feel like if you're a top fighter you could say I want to get in there and they're not going to say no to you mm. Mm. I, I just want to break the bubble of the, I just want to break the bubble of the, t- the big big corporations now Yeah, because they, they're kind of ruining it for heavyweight boxing Yeah, so that's why my, my interest would be the World Boxing Super Series having a heavyweight tournament 
I like that. Mm. Right. Um, <laughs> we, there's, there's actually so many questions coming in today. Uh, right. Let's do 15 minutes, no more, no less on this. This is a great question. This is from uh, Brendan Woodside, and that's at BPG29. Top three best and worst boxing hairstyles <laughs> of all time. Right. Best. Best and worst. Best. Do you know what? Best, I'm just going to go anybody with a, a, just a normal fade. Just a, yeah, just, just a straight up like or fade or a French crop. I'm not trying to racially discriminate anyone here. <laughs> um, just a standard hairstyle. Someone's not going to fuck you up. My one, I was David. We were talking about this briefly yeah. before we started, so I'm going to let David have that one. <laughs> I'm going to go with my one, right? My terrible one, David Lemieux. Oh, oh God, the, yeah. the, the comb over the, the triple G one when he fought him, and he had so much hair. It was that he and he actually looked like he was getting beaten to a pole. I mean, he was, <laughs> but you know, every time he got hit and the hair just flew across yeah. and all the sweat came and it just made everything look so much worse, so impractical. Mm. You could see it was coming down into his face, mm. and it was a <laughs> really stupid, stupid decision. Yeah, yeah. Dave, give us a bad one. We're gonna a bad one. Well, you know, well we've already <laughs> said it. Malinazi when he had the yeah. I don't know what you call them, but they weren't the cheese string kind of. Yeah, things. it was just headband with weird shit coming out the top. It's like you buy those hats, those, you know, those <laughs> the golf ones, ones. The, the, the <laughs> golf hats, are just weird. The shit golf visors, yeah, they that were was, awesome. That was just terrible. Yeah. Um, mullet has got to be up there. Like you don't ever want to get beaten up with a, by a geezer with a mullet. Usyk. Usyk's weird. He had, his oh, yeah. his is Lemure ish, Lemure ish. Sorry, yeah. isn't it? It's skin all the way there's a guy and then a tuft <laughs> I was looking at this maybe about two weeks ago uh, and his name is um, Raymond Javal I think I've seen this guy <laughs> when we finish recording give me the guy's name because that will be the thumbnail yeah, for our Raymond show today Javal and I'm pretty sure it's J-A-V-A-L okay it's bad for me, it's, I think it's like a halo a blonde halo on a black man yeah interesting <laughs> Like a Jibro yeah. Cisse of boxing. Interesting. But it's like he's... If you imagine a gold circle on the top of his head. Okay. Yeah. That's basically what it looked like, I think. He's I think basically just painted a target around, on yeah. his head, isn't he? he just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just needed a dot. <laughs> Bing! Yeah, well, I think when you come out like that, people just instinctively want to bang you out. Because, yeah. <laughs> idiot. What like, it? No body shots today, man. I'm, just, I'm, <laughs> I'm pure cleaning this hair off. Aim, aim that hair. <laughs> <laughs> Good yeah. haircut style. I can't really think of a good haircut. Like, I suppose David Hayes one looks good, doesn't it? When it's well, the, it looks the good. cornrows. Yeah, it does look good. But uh, his one as good. well. Yeah. See, I find that really funny because we've been at shows when it's been the haymaker shows, and he keeps that pristine. Mm. Like yeah. as soon as he's not on camera, the do rag is on, yeah. and he's yeah. tied up and he's he's ready his way in. As soon as the light flicks on on the camera, he whips it off. It's like that bit at the end of a porno, you know, where they whip off the condom and they're just about to do that. No, yeah. no idea, mate. You wouldn't know. No. Oh, well, no. Famous street Catholic led. Having <laughs> listened to what you said before we started recording, I feel like you do know. <laughs> okay. I feel like you've Next. seen that many, many times. <laughs> no. But yes, yeah, he, he whips it off quick and he's he's ready to go. It's. But I can imagine that you know if that gets a bit picky, that looks a bit, a bit shit. Yeah, a yeah. bit ratty everywhere. Uh, I'm also going to throw this out there, right? For a bad one, bad one. Dylan White to fight Oscar Rivas because he wasn't allowed to shave his hair. It looked fucking awful. Oh, a bit fro, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> like, the crumb was real. Like he was. But why didn't he just go back to like his that little mohawk thing? Because he still had hair to test. <laughs> I'm sure there's hair to test somewhere at some point. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, that mohawk was that should be in the bad bit as well. That was yeah. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> the shark wolf with the mohawk it's just, he's just a like none of his shit goes together he's like a thrift shop boxer like everything has just been taken from the cheap aisles <laughs> yeah. and just jammed together oh dear nothing fits true yeah and he's howling like a wolf and the coming out to the Jaws it. theme it's just like what yeah yeah it is it is a bit mishmash isn't it I know uh, yeah but I mean if you're on 
X amount of drugs and you can understand how these things happen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking and speculating. Obviously, I have no idea. No one has any idea because there's no B samples. Yeah, it's vanished. It's gone. <sighs> but anyway, Lost in the we are where we are. Um, it's really bad, isn't it? <laughs> because the resample is going to come back clean isn't it That's <laughs> it's they're, wait, back, they're, they're just know. waiting and long enough so they can just announce it and no one Mate, everyone forgets crazy. about what's happened yeah. it's going to come back clean and warm that's the problem <laughs> yeah yeah. Dylan's going to come out Zip. yeah it's fine <laughs> yeah. clean as a whistle fine thank you he was cleared to fight we told Next. you yeah. yeah exactly told you he didn't fuck up but yeah I'm, I'm, I like that the Malinaji haircut was the, was the one I initially yeah. as soon as I saw the tweet I was like yeah that Malinaji hair was dreadful uh, the Lemieux one came to me literally as we started talking mm. about it and Javal I'm, I'm pretty gonna, sure that I'm going to have to check that out and that's going to be the thumbnail for the show Javel. if it's a good one I'll have to quickly google that any special mentions for any good ones? Just, I think good just, ones are just you just, don't really you just want a clean the, cut uh, like you don't want long hair you don't want to get beaten up by a geezer with a mullet or jerry curls I've never seen jerry curls we, we said this earlier yeah, Jericho, you don't really see, I suppose. No, um, ever. Oh, it's J O V A R. Is the hair good though? The hair is very good. Is just, it, just tweet it out now, and then we'll put, we'll put context to it later. Wow, <laughs> excellent. Yeah, you've yeah. you've also got to realise that and he shaves the rest of his head. And I've just realised he's holding an IBO belt, which is so he's a legitimate champion. So we have to take it all back. He's obviously. A top quality operator. <laughs> Facts. He's a I'm world not champion. Wait, he is here because he we've got... been slagging off the IBO belt, and maybe we've been wrong the whole time. You just have to have a really bad haircut. Prince Patel's going to fight him soon, isn't he? Wait, is he? He's fifty now. He's fifty. Yeah, and he's still the world champion. Probably. Uh, probably he just won it. Shouts out to the IBO. <laughs> Middleweight as well, but Wait, you... he relinquished it in two thousand six. Uh, All right, so <laughs> you got excited then. I did, <laughs> but the problem is, I can actually trace that, you know, all the way to Eubank Junior. Yeah, he might be the lineal. I yeah, I was, <laughs> was going to throw out the lineal word, but that's been banded around a lot. Yeah. Um, They're fighting for it. Obviously, we're using this They're new platform, so we've got seven minutes before we have to take a, an interlude. Mm. Of sorts, so I suppose we can talk because it shouldn't take very long. Tyson Fury, lineal champion, versus Otto Whalen mm-hmm. or Wallen. Um, for the lineal, I've I, I've I've stumbled across a new definition of lineal now, and uh, I'm I'm on board with it. Straight line. As the lineal champion, <laughs> you can only fight unbeaten fighters, and that's what he's been doing since. Fuck it, I'm I'm down. Fair enough. I'm I'm down with that. I love. So he can't fight AJ now. No, he's no. Gone, fight's no. Gone. Do you know what? It doesn't matter because AJ's going to retire in a couple yeah. of months. But AJ, um, AJ's not worthy of challenging the lineal champion because he's already lost. It's not the man. Shame. So, so I, I like your definition of lineal. You should, uh, you should pitch up. that. Just made it up. To, made to Tyson Fury's, pr- um, yeah, his PRT. team. Unless it turns out he's fought someone he's lost since then, which uh, I think they've all been unbeaten. Yeah, I'm telling you, they just go on box rec. You go <laughs> heavyweight, filter by Let me check unbeaten. <laughs> click. You look at those names, and then you just go right. Exactly. Send out ten offers. I will pay you. Two hundred pounds to fight Tyson Fury. Yeah. No, five hundred, and then you see how many come back, and you just keep going up until eventually someone goes, "Yeah, I'll fight." Scrap it. Scrap it. Scrap it. Lost. Oh. That's his comeback, wasn't it? Yeah, we'll leave that. That's that's stricken from the Lineal record. Oh, he <laughs> lost to Char as well. I remember that. I don't know. You've actually seen Char fight? No, I remember them mentioning that. Right. Okay. <laughs> He's one of those people that the name gets said all the time, and then you say, "Have you ever seen him?" And you're like, "No." No. No, I have oh. not. I'm going to work on a new definition of the Lineal Champion. <laughs> just <laughs> make it fit. It lasted last, last last 30 seconds. Up, line up all the opponents. Or was that when he became the Lineal Champion? When he, is that a comeback? Yeah, it's that one. <laughs> That's what he be- so what are we saying? That Sefer Seferson was, was the Lineal the Champion at that point? Until uh, Char beat him. By the new definition. <laughs> yeah. This is backfiring. Yeah. Backfiring <laughs> big time. Right. But I think... I think I think to answer your question or to I think Fury's got to be commended for fight, fighting undefeated fighters <laughs> someone's read the press release <laughs> uh, no problem with it Wallen's not that bad 
He's not that bad. Is he a step up or down from last time? I'm going to go up. I'd say. Up. Uh, but how far up is it? When you're I'm going to say, right, if, if when he'd come <laughs> back... because they build the last guy as number two in the world, so... Right, if, if before Tyson Fury had his comeback, if someone had said in his first four fights he's going to fight Stefferson, Schwartz, uh, this new Waylon, and Wilder, you'd have gone, all right. I think the only problem he's got is that he fought Wilder. Second, third. In, in the wrong, he's done this in the wrong order. Yeah. If this was yeah. the Wilder fight now, you'd go, fair play, fair play to it. Yeah. He's come back and he's going straight into it. Yeah. So he should be commended again for taking that fight so early in his comeback. Mm. But now because we've had that is that one what is it if I'd never uh, I'd never learned to riches or yeah you know that sort of thing no <laughs> oh, I have to come back to so the only one. thing is I wouldn't feel so poor if I'd never seen such riches okay there we go so we've seen him so have the great counter moments. argument to that would be that he has fought Wilder and we've seen that we know he's at that level yeah and we also know he's fighting Wilder again yeah and this is just tune ups yeah I, I would that's it yeah I agree with that I think it's it's two half decent tune ups it's better than some pub fella or some bouncer from somewhere else but these are legitimate really though, these, yeah but they're legitimate what, they're legitimate I, I Wallen fighters right. um, oh Wallen 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 um, yeah I think they're not bad as as tune up fights go like they're they're not, don't get me wrong they're not top 10 fillers in my crit- eyes but critics can't really have it both ways I mean you can't say well that's it he's not the lineal champion because that doesn't exist and then criticise the fact he's not fighting anyone good yeah like, because he can't fight anyone good if he hasn't got any belts so you yeah. either you have your and, eye and the it. fact is that he's already set down for the Wilder rematch what's he supposed to do for the next do you many think months? if he beats Wilder in the rematch the WBC will have a lineal Championship belt. I think they probably already they got will, one floating they, around they will, they will because Wilder one. would become the lineal champion if he won. Oh my god! <laughs> but gonna, yeah. WC make a belt. Of course it will. Belt. Of course it will. What do you like, get? If you're going to be like a really long belt that just goes around you about four times? No, it can't go. It's, it's just <laughs> straight. It will, it's, it's not it's even an a apron. belt. He wears around his. It's like one of those you know, you just smack it over your wrist and then wrap round. <laughs> yeah. They just so keep just, wrapping. You just give it over like a really yeah. straight belt, like one of the massive checks or something you get when yeah. you win the lottery, and then someone's just going to hit him across the stomach. Wrap it's wrap round. That's how belts should be, anyway. Fuck yeah, man! That'd be awesome. Yeah. Wait, we'll still go around Wilder a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> well, that'd be good. Imagine it had like all the like the WBC have the photos of people, and this one had to be about twenty yards long yeah. with all the <laughs> champion just, John L. Just, Sullivan. Just. No, just just a sketch, of Fury's face. Face. just a sketch, <laughs> artist <laughs> depiction. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. Those faces <clears throat> don't work on on uh, audio. All right, though. mate. Fucking hell. Don't worry, you'll get the hang of this. It's only been two, three years. <sighs> so actually, I think that's a good idea. I think the WBC have got an opportunity that no other organisation have got to do a lineal belt. I and think then it's a thing. <laughs> I reckon that if if then Wilder loses, though they'll make him like franchise champion or some shit <laughs> he's suddenly he'll, he'll have another belt in the next couple of weeks yep um, but yeah I obviously we'll talk more about the, the Fury Waylon or Wylan Waylon but I, I'm I am disappointed but as I said for me I'm disappointed because it's it's, it's all been done in the wrong order mm. and you kind of shoot yourself in the foot when you you, you just peaked too early already yeah. and it's Maybe that's his fault. Maybe it's not. I very much doubt he wants to fight these guys. He's a big showman. Obviously, he's gonna he's gonna want to put on a big show again. I think he's slightly deflated. He's, hasn't he sort of suggested that he's gonna have another fight in England at the end of the year now yeah. because Wilder's well, fight's gonna be later than they thought. Right. Um, yeah. It's it's a strange one. Um, like I said, we'll we'll talk more about Tyson Fury as we get closer to the fight. Um, we are going to take a very, very short interlude. For you listening, it will be instantaneous. 